All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started for today. Uh, welcome to the Unique Venues member webinar on preparing for the rebound part three, perfecting your presence. Uh, we're pleased to have Chuck Salem with us again to uh, do a, a great webinar and answer questions from the audience. We're expecting a couple hundred people. So those of you that have been on these before kind of know how things are going. But just as a reminder, everyone will remain on mute throughout the webinar, uh, other than the presenter and, and panelists here. Um, so if you have a question to submit about the presentation itself, the topics, the items that are being discussed, please use the Q&A dialog box to do so. You can press the Q of A button on your Zoom dashboard, pop up a window, you can enter questions there. I'll either type in a response to them or uh, indicate that Chuck will answer them live as he takes breaks throughout his presentation. We will do a few polls today as we've been doing all along. Uh, one is on website framework, one is on website management, and one is on website content. Keep your eye on the chat box for when those launch. I will let you know when they launch and when they close and we're sharing the results. Then finally, if you have other questions uh, that you'd like to ask of the group or comments to share, again, please select all, pan all panelists and all attendees so that everybody has the benefit of seeing your comment and your question. And uh, Allie, our director of marketing, will go ahead and assist with uh, monitoring the chat box and responding to things that are going on there today. And with that, I'm going to stop my share. I'm gonna turn it over to Chuck and let him get started for today. Hear me? Oh, let me go to unmute. You're all, all right. Set. Can you hear me okay now? All righty. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for uh, joining us again today. Um, we are, you know, unfortunately uh, still in the midst of this crisis, but fortunately have the ability to continue to connect with you and uh, help to provide some educational experiences and support services to you during this time. Um, I'm real excited uh, because in this particular uh, session that we're doing today, it was a real learning experience for me. So um, while some of the things uh, we will impart to you today uh, via this presentation um, are things that I've talked about before, I needed to do some learning on my own and I came to some great realizations about our own presence here at Unique Venues. So you can bet that I'm gonna take some of the things that we're going to talk about today uh, and implement them ourselves here at Unique Venues as we move along. Now, I'm sorry, I don't think you can see me right now, but you can see my slides. Is that correct, Joel? They can see you at the top of their gallery window okay, if, they, if, they, if they have that part, uh, if their screen is big enough. Okay, good. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So this is part of our Preparing for the Rebound series. Uh, as you know, we've talked about data mining now. Uh, recently, we talked about so, uh, social undistancing, which was more about using social platforms at this time. Uh, this one is called Perfecting Your Presence. Again, uh, with no clear end in sight for any of what we're all experiencing right now. Um, the unintended gift that we right, have right now uh, is the ability to focus on some of the things that normally we would not have time to do. And so today we're going to focus on a couple things. One is uh, your ways to perfect your presence with your website. And another one is ways to, uh, I'm going to show you some examples of ways that people are really harnessing the power of their unique venues profile as well. So we've got 10 tips for you today. Uh, we'll try to go through them. Again, as Joel said, if you have any questions, let us know, and we'll go ahead and get started. So one of the things I want to start with is five things you can do right now. So these are things that I feel like I would hope that with minimal uh, effort, you actually might have some control to do some of these things that I'm about to talk about. Um, yourself without having to rely on either outsourcing it or uh, having to, to talk with somebody from a technological standpoint. Now we're going to be doing some polling and so I could be off base in some of the questions we're going to ask. We're going to, you know, we're going to find out how much control you actually have over your web presence. But um, I'm making the assumption based upon conversations that I've had either is through our consulting roles or just with clients in general. 
So here are some of the five things that I would like to encourage you to focus on, and we'll talk about each one of these. Um, first is update your imagery. Second is your introduction, your introduction to your venue. Third is updating your key pages, home pages, pages about your meeting and event spaces. If you have overnight accommodations, uh, updating your overnight accommodations pages, updating dining and catering experiences and testimonials. And then um, also uh, providing shareable links because people like, you want people to interact with your web page and with your unique venues profile, one in the same. And so you wanna go ahead and um, make sure you have some good shareable links on your site and also a specials landing page. So let's talk about the first one, update imagery. Uh, we've talked about this before and they, there's that old saying that a picture, uh, picture's worth a thousand words. And the truth is, it really is. Uh, you know, you can look at a picture um, that is um, of a meeting or event space that shows it in a very utilitarian way. You can see, um, you know, the room, you can see the carpeting, you can see the lights, but you don't see the room brought to life three-dimensionally with events, and there's a big difference in that. So you want to make sure you go in and you put some of the best imagery forward that you possibly can. When I look at some unique venues profiles, it's really interesting to me. I'm not sure how many of you realize you can do this, but you can actually set the order of the images in your online profile um, when you log into your member dashboard. And all you have to do is click edit your profile and you can go ahead and say, this is the event, this is the picture I first want to appear when somebody comes and arrives at my profile and they click on the link. And sometimes I get really thrown off because I'll see a, a picture that's first, and I think to myself, well, I've been to that venue, or I know that venue, and they've got some beautiful spaces, and I wonder why they chose this one, and I never quite understand why they do. And so I would encourage you right now, uh, one of the things to do is to go to your unique venues profile and update your images. Are your images old? Are your images current? Um, are your images in an order that escalates? Think about the process Think about the process of somebody booking a meeting or event space. So regardless if they have overnight needs or not, they do have meeting needs, correct? So that's going to be the number one thing that people are going to want to learn about. you. The one thing that people are going to need is a gathering space, whether it's for a social event, a meeting, or a conference. So highlighting an overnight accommodation as your first picture is making the assumption that every group that looks at you only will need overnight accommodations and that's their primary focus. But all groups have meeting and event needs. So that to me is the most important. Every group has food and dining needs. So great food and beverage shots are great. And then move into your overnight accommodations and those types of images. Um, try to show both, if, if you want to show a utilitarian uh, image of, of a space, so it without something happening into it, match that picture, bringing it to life and kind of show it in a transformational way whenever you can. The other thing that I like to do sometimes is I'll look at a venue's profile and then I'll look at their website. And I'll see these great images on their website and I think to myself, why isn't that on their profile? They need to get that on the profile. And I think one of the reasons that people do that is they set up their profile two years ago and they haven't really taken the time to update it. So I really encourage you to update um, your images and keep them fresh. On your own website, that is really, really important. Um, you know, any chance or opportunity you have to put great engaging image, imagery in, hero shots we call them, uh, large images that elicit a connectivity to your venue is really important to do. Um, this is going to be, I'm going to try to make the commitment that at least for four weeks, you'll never hear me talk about things like features, advantages, and benefits again, because if you've been on all of my workshops, it's all I talk about, features, advantages, and benefits, but the truth is, it's like, it's like your bloodline. It's like what, what, you know, is your lifeline to who you are and how you explain who you are and what people learn about you the very first time they interact with you. So I really encourage everyone to take a look at their introductory 
um, statement on their website, so on your homepage, how you state who you are and how you help people and what you can do for them is really important. And the same thing on your unique venues profile. Both your unique venues profile and your website have ways and means for you to share with people who you are, what you're about, and how you can help them and solve their problems. So I really encourage each one of you to take some time over these next couple days and read your introductory statement. Now I'm actually gonna show you some examples uh, from profiles as we progress through the presentation here. But, um, yeah, this is something that I want you to take the time to do. This is in your control, right? Unique venues, all you have to do is log in with your member ID and password, and you can completely rewrite um, your introductory statement so that you're eliciting both that fact through rational comments, but also feeling through your emotive appeal about who you are and what you do. And the example I show you does a really good job. It's a little bit long, but it's also excellent at the same time. So you can maybe use that as an example for yourself. Now's the time to update all of your pages. Um, one of the questions we're gonna be asking in our polling is how frequently you do those things and, um, and who does those things. But right now is your opportunity to go through all of your key pages. Now, I don't know how many pages you have. And again, that's something we're gonna be asking later just to kind of get a sense for how deep a venue's website is. But minimally, you've got a home page. You've got space. Uh, you should have a page that outlines your different meeting and event spaces that you have available for people to rent. I'm sorry, I have my, uh, got to get this uh, pool question just popped up in front of me. Um, so you have your home page. You've got spaces page. If you do have overnight accommodations, you most likely have a link that provides information about your overnight accommodations, dining, food, beverage, catering any experiences that you offer, any client testimonials. If you have a unique venues expanded profile with which the vast majority of members do have, you have that ability to build and to, to address each one of these areas in your unique venues profile. And most likely, and hopefully, you are able to mirror that and mimic that also on your website. It is not a bad thing to have the same information on each because people are either going to find you through unique venues or they're going to find you through your website either or are going to provide people the ability to submit a lead so you don't have to keep reinventing what you say about yourself on each of these pages you have the ability to to duplicate that information with whatever modifications you feel you need to make so we're going to go through some of those and just take a look at how people present themselves in various ways. But um, as far as your website goes and your unique venues profile, I've already asked you to take a look at your images and update them. Take a look at your introductory statement and make an update to how you present yourself. And now I want you to go to each one of these key pages and, and think through again now what do I say about this particular service? What kind of information? Just like you do on your home page with a general introduction, on these key pages, you want to also have the features, advantages, and benefits of whatever that page addresses. So if it's meeting and event spaces, you want to focus a fab statement of features, advantages, and benefits about your event spaces, about your overnight accommodations, about your dining and catering, about your experiences. Testimonials, I, I found some great resources that show you some really simple ways to get some good testimonial video and information out there. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you in today's presentation as well. Shareable links, any kind of link that you can possibly put into your, there are places on unique venues where you can put in links. And your website gives you free reign, most likely, um, unless you've got some kind of internal policies that prevent links to your resources, but I would hope that they wouldn't because they're your resources. Um, you wanna put those in because people look for those things now. They look for links to your social platforms and all of your different social engagement that they have. They're looking for a link to deeper information, something they can download without having to maybe uh, go to a website. They're looking for shareable links that they can forward on to somebody else because here's what we know statistically um, 
more often than not, it's more than two people who are making decisions about a site selection for a meeting or conference. So any kind of information that you can have on your website that you can forward as a shareable link is really, really worthwhile uh, to put in there. And then the one thing that I really get amazed by, I'm going to take a guess that right now only about 5% of Unique Venues members take advantage of posting specials on their profile because you can. And we actually have an entire page dedicated to specials that we share with meeting and event planners. So I really encourage you to always have a special, always have a special. There's, there's no retailer out there that doesn't always have a special. There's probably very few large hospitality-based entities from the traditional side, hotels or whatever, that, that don't have special offerings um, or packages that they, they offer. Um, we don't seem to get do that quite enough. And I really encourage you to have, if you can, build a special page in your website that is specials and offers. Check out our special offers available at the conference center or at this, or at the Carlisle Club or whatever it may be and they click or, or it can say, uh, you know, current special, 10% off, dot, dot, dot. To see all of our specials, click here. So there's, it's a great opportunity because I want you to think about yourself as a consumer. Do you like special offers? Do you like incentives? Do you like value? I believe that we all do. We all look for it. And so let's provide that. So we give you a platform to do that at uniquevenues.com. There's no additional fee to do that. So you want to make sure when you log in with your member ID and password to your member dashboard that you can go in and change and add a special anytime. You can have unlimited specials. Um, we have a venue up there that has three or four specials listed right now between now and the end of December that I'm going to show you as an example as we go through these. So um, take advantage of the specials landing page at uniquevenues.com through your dashboard and make sure you take the time to work with your IT department or if you have the ability to do it yourself to develop a landing page within your website template that is specifically dedicated to special offers. I do believe in highlighting a special offer on your homepage, on your website, but always have some kind of a link where people are able to go in um, and see all of your special offers. Okay? Hey, Chuck, Any questions, Joel? Yeah, we had a question come in from someone asking, is it okay to have the same images on your website and your UV profile? Yes. I, I, don't, I don't see any problem with that. While we do provide a link, to your website from Unique Venues. The look and feel is very different. Unique Venues has a website gallery. You can have up to 30 images on there. So people will, will elect to click through and to see them. They're not gonna see them all there. Um, and if they are going from your Unique Venues profile to your website, it's not because they wanna see more images most likely. It's because there's something that you're not telling them on your unique venues profile that makes them feel like they need to go to your website. So probably, to be honest, probably people with the base level banded profile have more people who are going to their website from unique venues than people who have the expanded profile on uniquevenues.com because the expanded profile tends to give people all of the information they need. And again, if you're not filling out and taking advantage of all of the different um, pieces of information that we let you expand upon on your unique venues profile, then they're going to feel like they have to leave it. You know, the problem with that is, again, think about basic internet consumerism that you go through. The more you can find on one place, the better it is, right? So um, I hope that answered your question. Any other questions, Joel, before we move on? No, nope, keep rolling. All right. I want to share you some of my uh, with you some of my favorite websites that I, I looked at. Now, I will admit, first of all, spoiler alert, none of them have all of the must haves. I, I can't tell you how much time and energy I spent just trying to find like 
the best website. I even Googled the best websites. And every time I found them, I was let down by each and every one of them. I will be honest with you. But I found some sites that for some reason pulled me in that they have some of the characteristics that we've spoken about or we will talk about a little bit later. But to me, again, I am an emotive consumer. So if you can pull me in and kind of reach me by feeling something by looking at your site, you're gonna do better with me. But not everybody's like that. But again, I just wanna share some of those. So um, Emirates Stadium is, is uh, you know, we represent a number of stadiums at uniquevenues.com. Now, here's what I don't like about, uh, about their website. This is very busy down here to me. This whole area seems kind of busy. Um, and I'm sure it will be better. And let me just make it a little bit bigger here. Um, got rid of some of the gray space on the side. But there's a lot of gray space. So these are some of the things I don't like about it. But I do like the, the hero shots, the sliders that they have here. I think one of the things that they're missing out a little bit are some words that over that um, are overlays on the pictures that, again, are emotive responses to the image. Um, I, you know, I'm, I, I know enough to look at this and know a great use of their logo because, again, their brand is very important. Their brand is part of what sells. It's like saying, I get to have my event where Arsenal plays. I get to have my event where the Steelers play. I get to have my event where the Pirates play. Whatever it is, there's something very, there's almost some prestige in that branding. Um, they've got a very, you know, they've got a, what I call a sticky form. It's an inquiry form that follows me. Doesn't matter where I go on the page, there's an inquiry form at all places. So it's what is called sticky. And you want to think about having a sticky inquiry form wherever possible. Um, here's their kind of a, a motive statement. There's some great stuff in here that's rational. There's great stuff that's emotive. They've got a... Um, They've got a tour here. Now, one of the things, I, I don't know why it's not showing up here. There was typically an image that was showing here. Oh, it's because I think I might have stopped it. But so they've got a great um, tour here uh, that uh, I need to turn up the sound on, but I'm not going to do that right now. They've got different things that um, you can, sh diff different things. You can see the boardroom, number of guests, things like that show and you're going to get different spaces that are a perfect fit for them. So I, what I like about that is it doesn't make me have to go and do a lot of work to figure out where I could use and where I can't use. This tells me what it is for what I need, at least from two major uh, perspectives. They're narrowing down um, my options for you and I really like that. And here we've got their, here we've got their uh, socials. Now, one of the things I think is a good thing, they've got their accolades. They uh, have, you know, when people are saying great things about them, they're putting it there. Their socials just aren't on links. Here's tweets, okay? So um, again, accolades, bronze for best use of non-match day use of venue goes to at Arsenal. Well done, folks. I mean, these are the kinds of things that I, I really like and appreciate about um, who they are as a venue in their website. All right, moving along. Um, this one is a small um, co-working and event space in San Francisco. Um, and so it's part of a, a larger venue. Um, and so there's all types of things that you can do with this. There's, uh, but I'm gonna click on the event space part. My um, unique spaces tailored for innovation. I've got my call to action right here. I've got really cool images. I've got the places brought to life. I'm seeing technology. I'm seeing possibilities. I'm seeing engagement. I really, really like that. Um, this is the one thing I don't like about it. I think this is really wasted space, something to learn when you're perfecting your presence is I would, this is the second thing. So here you've got this great introduction and for some reason, they took me to a place where they're giving me the uh, definition of events. And I think that's huge wasted space. I mean, uh, some people will leave you right here. It's like, I really don't wanna know that. This is what I wanna hear. This is what I wanna see. What are your features? You know, they use graphics. 
you know, I love this, completely customizable, start planning your event and they take people through the process of planning. Floor plans and photos and I can click on these and learn more for conferences, for expos, and they show different ways that the venue can be laid out. This one's really cool. This is a 3D event planner and so you click through it and you actually can see a 3D um, and begin a 3D uh, experience to planning um, using their spaces. Let me see if I can click through this and get me there copied. I just need to open it up here. Hold on, let me do that. So hold on. And this takes me to their 3D planner. It's loading. Hopefully everybody's following along here again. So here's their room that's empty. I can go in, I could add chairs, I could add tables. There's all kinds of things that they're offering here for people to be playing around with the space and see, is this something that's really good for me? It's a great tool that is um, available on their site. So I really find this small, it's not really small, but it's not like, you know, it's not uh, a huge company. Um, it's a one-off and I really like the way they do what they do. Now, maybe you're a small event venue. There was something about this website that I really, really liked. It's called the Tin Roof Barn. Well, I know what it was that I really liked. This is just, this is not an overstated website in any way, shape, or form. Um, one of the cool things they do here, I don't know if you can see what's happening here, but it shows the barn. You know, there's different things happening inside the barn on the tree. They're hanging lights. They're putting different words in. Magic loves it here. Um, I just think they're using some really interesting techniques on this very understated uh, page. They've got a great um, emotive statement here. I love that they use Magic loves it here throughout. They've got their bookings, their inquiries. They've got their social platforms. I love this. Join our mailing list. Um, so you've got all of that. And then when you look at their different um, pages that you can scroll through, I love their gallery. This is an event venue. People who, they more than anything, they want to see events. They want to see pictures of events that they can feel or get some kind of sense of you know, kind of, wow, that is amazing. Oh my gosh, I can envision this. And when you look at this website, you get those very notions by looking here. There's some beautiful, beautiful pictures. I love this. Testimonials, people love to hear the personal side. And I'm going to tell you what I don't like about this site. It drove me crazy when I saw it. Somebody's missing a big, big, um, problem here because they've laid this out differently in the first picture than the other picture and it, th it has thrown off and jogged the entire page. And so these are like the little things that you should pay attention to, um, but you can actually see each one of their stories. Now, I'm going to tell you one of the things I don't like about their stories, but this is so fixable on their part. They tell everybody at first about how they met. I'd rather hear how they used my venue and share about it and then have a link to see, read their story of how they met. Right now, this is a, this is a website that's about, you know, the ultimate goal is to get people to book the tin roof barn. I don't feel like we should be making people read three paragraphs about their dating life before they read about how great their wedding was at the Tin Roof Barn. So I'd rather just spend the time here hearing about how great the Tin Roof Barn is and then put a link into learning more about how they met and all of that. So it's just my, that would be my critique for them. They have a great Q&A page as well as, they call it investment. Another thing I don't like uh, about it. Um, they call it investment, but it's more of their packages and pricing. And But I do like the way they have it set up. Here's their availability. Here's their different amenities that they have. Um, they have preferred coordinators. Um, they have preferred caterers, DJs. So it's a resource page. Um, and then they've got some pricing listed as well. So this is some great information that they, that they provide. Um, another one that I liked, um, I like the Sentinel Hotel. I'm going directly to the meetings page because I always say you should say, you should tell people, and I love this, stop provoking meetings. Looking for inspiration, motivation, a place for congratulation, 
our spaces are legendary for their stunning architecture and delectable catering. Okay, so in here, I get information about their rooms, their spaces. It's easy, it's digestible. Um, I get to learn about their different floors. I can click on them and it expands and gives me the same information that I'm getting up, up above. Um, you're in excellent hands with our Portland events staff. I can fill out, get an RFP. So this is a nice, simple for an event venue. Uh, this is a great, a great page right here. And then the Whitney Hotel in Boston. I, there is a lot I don't like about this, but I'm gonna show you the thing I like about this the most, okay? They've got great images, they've got great messages, but my favorite thing about this is that their landing pages are laid out with a really nice large image and a great statement in between, and each one has the call to action to view more right in it, and I like this. Here's their offers page, experience Whitney specials and packages. Find your perfect stay through our curated packages or special pricing I could click through. Takes me right to an offers page. Uh, dining, it, so everything's here that um, you could possibly want. Here's a link to everything that's around them. So the way they laid out um, and take the user of the site down a pathway to learn more, I really like in a nice, clean, um, a nice, clean uh, presence. Okay. Any questions, Joel, before I move on? Yes, actually, a couple of good questions for this section. One, do you think photos should have people in them or empty spaces? I think they should have both. To be honest, I think that if I had my way, I would use pictures of people in my, on my homepage, my spaces. If I, and then if I have a link to meeting and event spaces on that main page of that meeting and event spaces landing page, I would show all of my meeting and event spaces brought to light. But then when I click on each one of the meeting and event spaces, I would show them without, okay? Because the, the, the main page, whether it's the landing page for meeting and event spaces or it's the home page, these are, these are much more emotional response-based pages. These are the ones that make people wanna see and learn more. If I'm on an uh, event space landing page and I see all kinds of really great things, I'm going to look at these rooms, especially if there are labels on those rooms and the pictures that show people, you know, a nice overlay term. And then I'm going to say, oh, wow, look at that really cool vent that's in the bank ballroom. Oh, I'm going to click on the bank ballroom. And when I click there, I could see it without because I've already had the chance to imagine what is in it, you know? I'll tell you a really cool effect that I think would be great is if you have the ability to take a picture of a space without and a picture of a space with something happen and have that same picture fade in and out. So people are able to, to go in and out and experience it and it's a utilitarian way and in a, uh, a, a, a high use life like three dimensional way. Okay, Joel? Another question would be, do you recommend putting pricing directly on the web page PDF download or should you ask clients to contact them every time because pricing sometimes is different by event? I am going to hold off on that question because we're going to be talking about trends that they should consider and pricing is one of those. So we're going to talk about pricing on your website. A little bit All later. right, then uh, let's keep rolling. All right. Um, I also have some things that I wanna highlight from some UV profiles that are within your control. So ever since COVID-19 has, has started, we, I've been really been encouraging people in all of these workshops, go out there and put some message out there to your clients. Put it on your website, put it on your unique venues profile. Um, I'm just really, really proud of this. Southern New Hampshire University, and um, you know they've been a part of a lot of our um, sessions that we've been doing here. And I just love that they took something and brought it to life. Here's a video right here of a very, you know, direct message to customers um, of reassurance. Um, so it's just made with Hi. an iPhone. This is Holly from the Southern New Hampshire University Conference and Event Services team. During these uncertain times, we at SNHU wanted to let you know we're here for you. While our campus is currently closed, 
we're hopeful that we'll return to full operations later this summer, and we'd like to help you plan for a future beyond COVID-19. So please give us a call with any questions or even just to say hi. We're here for you and we'll be waiting for when things return to normal. We miss you and please stay safe, everyone. Simple, really simple. I mean, I love what Holly did there. It was just, um, it, you know, maybe, I don't know if she's like me, I could not have done that in five minutes, but maybe for her, it only took five minutes to do. And you just simply go in with your member ID and password and upload it. And it, it's just, these are the kind of things that people want to hear right now, right? So uh, I, I just love that. I thought it was great. Um, as far as I keep talking about features, advantages, and benefits, um, Bowling Green, I love their features, advantages, and benefits statement because it's a really good mix of, of uh, emotional and rational. The only thing I would say is it's a little bit long. And so if we could cut out maybe a third of what's being stated here and condense it, it's great. But again, there's a lot of good information in here. So you might wanna look at how they blend the, the uh, rational and the emotional appeal of why people might wanna go to their venue. This is one of our most successful venues and it's in the middle of farmland in, in Northwest Ohio, it is not in any kind of large city, major metropolitan area. You know, there have been years where they've booked seven hundred thousand dollar pieces of business. They book, you know, they're constantly booking, and I think one of the reasons is because they're very attentive to their profile. Um, so when they get a lead from someone, it's a lead that's based upon information, not so much an inquiry. You know, people are going to interact with you from either your website or your unique venue's profile in different ways. The more good, relevant, knowledge-based information that you can provide to someone, the more deep their request for information will be with you. They won't just be seeking more information, they might be seeking an RFP from you. So that's the kind of thing, you know, so when Bowling Green gets a lead from us, more often than not, they're actually getting a, pro a request for a proposal than a request for additional information, if that makes sense, okay? Um, next, uh, services and experiences. So here's another very successful venue with us in out in uh, Western North Carolina, um, I admit they have the advantage of being in the Great Smoky Mountains, um, but one of the things I love about them and their expanded profile is they do a great job talking about services and experiences. I mean, if you're looking, if you're wondering, we all know that meeting and event planners are looking for something out of the ordinary, right? I always joke and say, People never stand around the water cooler or in, or in the lunchroom and say, I cannot wait to go to the Hilton Ballroom for our team building. I, I love a good Hilton Ballroom, right? No, the whole idea, the whole reason we exist is to build intrigue and for people to stand around saying, okay, wait, we're going to a movie theater. How, what on earth is that about? Or I don't get it. Like, we're going to a university or we're going to have like, are we, and people start to talk. It may not be things you want to hear. I remember when I worked at a university conference center and people having discussions like, oh, I bet you I'm going to have to carry my shower caddy down the hall when I take a, you know, take a shower every morning with 30 of my best friends. And up, oh, I bet we're having chicken nuggets and hot dogs in the dining hall, but they start to talk about it. And what's really cool is maybe that's how they show up at your place with these low expectations and all of a sudden you've given them the opportunity to blow them away. Or you're some kind of really cool, like oh, you're a warehouse event venue, like a area 15 in Vegas or something like that. And you know, you're tell, able to sh show them through experiences you offer things that you can do. So one of the things I loved about this site is they like, just talk about all of the stuff they have base camp, call away, kayaking, whitewater rafting, all of these things that they actually can offer a group who is coming to their venue. You know, they're not putting things up there like, sorry to tease you, but that's only for people that go to school at Western Carolina University. They're not. These are things that they're able to offer. And so if you're an art gallery, um, one of my frustrations is that I wanted to share some of the museums, we have tons of museums on unique venues and I thought they're gonna do a really great job outlining the experiences and I can't find experiences. 
they all offer them. I can tell you, I've been to we represent, and I sat in a room where they had divers in their big tank talking to us and teaching us during our dinner. It's not on the profile. It has, those are the things that you want to share. Because you know what? If not, you're just that ballroom at the Hilton, right? So you want to make sure you really um, talk about your experiences and highlight those. In the places we've provided, they're already there for you at Unique Venues. So take advantage um, in, in outlining those things. And on your website, that's what people want to know. What makes you different? Why you? Your experiences that you can offer. When I worked at the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown, people loved the experiences that we were able to offer them. We had great, we had an, um, a speakers bureau that we put together on campus. Now, I don't know if they still have it or not, but we actually had a guide to all of the faculty members at the university who had a great topical um, discussion that they can lead or an experience that they can lead. We had a, a faculty member who was known for fire walking and he, he would do fire walking demonstrations and, and talk to people about you know, the mindset behind it. Uh, we had um, the uh, mad scientist that used to be on the Jay Leno show years and years ago was a faculty member at Pitt Johnstown. And you know, he would come and do, his name is Dr. David Willey, and he would come and do some of these really crazy experiments that he used to do on the Jay Leno show. So, I mean, we had faculty members who can talk about those things and, and we share those. So just some of the, the, the ways that we um, engaged and shared with our clients there. All right, and then here's specials. So again, I wish I could tell you that I found a really good venue that took advantage of specials, but I did go to our specials page and I really like the Ranch Events Complex here, March 1st to December 31st, 2020 are their specials. And they've got some things that are listed here. They've got, there's, I can email Katie Buttermore right from here. And look, I can also go to their profile at uniquevenues.com. And when I click through the megaphone, I can see the specials that they're currently offering as well under news and specials. So again, there's things happening there. All right, I was worried I wouldn't have enough content. I got to um, move through this. Refresh your, we're gonna move into the next five things that are trends, right? So what I do wanna say is our team will help each and every one of you refresh your unique venues profile. All you have to do is email membership at uniquevenues.com and one of our membership services team members We'll schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you. We'll go, if you have just a one-page profile, we'll go through the one-page profile and help you to maximize your presence on your unique venues profile. If you've got the expanded profile, we'll go through every page of your expanded profile and, and tell you all of the things you're not taking advantage of and tell you how to better take advantage. So during this time of, of, of reinventing yourself, this is a good time to go in and refresh your unique venues profile. That's probably easier than refreshing your website. At least go do that. Um, as your first step and just contact membership at uniquevenues.com. There's no additional fee to do that. We want to spend time with you and help you. Now, I read about a bunch, a bunch of website trends, but some of them I thought, well, I'm not even going to talk about them because they're pipe dreams. Like, for instance, adding artificial intelligence and voice, uh, you know, basically putting Alexa on, you know, an Alexa type tool on your website. I mean, I'm, I, I know too much about us and I'm like, well, that isn't going to happen. So let's just talk about things that are realistic. Before I do that, though, are there any questions, Joel? Nope, there are no open questions, so keep right on rolling. All right, great. Let's go through. So here are the five trends to consider. Video content, pricing transparency, chatbots, mobile, and self-selection. So let's go through each one of these. So video content, I've been saying this, you know, prior to COVID-19, people were spending an average of an hour and 15 minutes uh, looking at videos every day. And this is one of the most interacted in studies where they do what's called heat mapping of a website where people actually are interacting and they can kind of show what are the hot spots on the website. Videos are very often one of the hottest um, spots on a, on a homepage of a website that people are interacting with. So then I, I've also been telling you people want testimonials, testimonials, testimonials. It's, it's true. So I found some great examples of some kind of easy to do 
um, videos, and this comes from Animoto. So I will tell you, I have no relationship with Animoto whatsoever. I'm sure there's other Animoto-like um, platforms out there. We have used Animoto at unique venues, but I will be honest, they're really simple to do. So I just want to show you, so when you think about the prospect of having a video presence on your website or videos, you know, up at unique venues, if you've got the core package, you can have a video on there. And if you have the expanded packages, you can have up to five videos. People love to see these things. So I, I, I have some samples that I like to show you. The first one is a multi-customer testimonial. So this is where you're doing a video that is put together um, highlighting what a, a lot of people are saying. Um, I'm not sure I linked on. Oh yeah, this might be it. I'm trying to get the sound going here. Every single aspect life changing without a doubt. Absolutely has changed my life. She changed her life for, for good. It has changed my life. Just by implementing one simple system we got 25 new members in about two weeks. I've probably brought in about um, over $3,000 worth of um, new money. I've increased our retention rate to over 90%. I've added 50 new clients and several new revenue streams. I have increased my income um, over $3,000 a month um, since I began with her. To bring in 20 quality people into the program in eight weeks of time is for me pretty awesome because it over doubled to what I, what I had. So what I liked about what they did there is they just asked people to take a quick clip. They, they asked them to answer a question. And I don't know how many of you realized what they did there, but they showed each of those people so far at least twice. The first time was two or three cents. It changed my life. It made me successful. It's the best thing I've done. And then they revisited all of those people and they said they took it one step further. I, I have 20 new clients that pay me this much money. So they've escalated how Fitbit Accelerator has helped them. So that was just a series of, hey, finding 10 clients to say, could you do a quick answer this question and give us permission to use you in a video? So there, there was one. Here's one that's a compilation of testimonials via email or social media. So people, things people have written or typed about a venue or about a product. This is a realtor. These are all testimonials from clients. I want to live there. Now we've got an accolade, five stars on Trulia. Ending with her website. So that was a very simple, again, taking information that's been shared with her and putting it into a really quick video that talks about her success and what she's done for people. And it ended with two accolades that she's received, okay? Here's one that's product a product specific. Um, again, I haven't used this yet, but I might. Um, but it's about a product. It's a combination of a really short video that talks about what, event, what the product has to offer and what people have said about it. So it's a compilation of both fact and then the emotive testimonial, okay? Um, here's one about transformation, and that's what venues are. You're a tr you provide a transformative experience. You provide the experience of taking four walls, carpet, and a ceiling and turning them into a memorable event for someone. So here's one that's more about transforming. Now, again, it's the transforming dog's paws, but again, people want to see transformation. You deserve to have a great event. You Dogs deserve to have good pods. You deserve to have a great event. Something that's transformational and also has a combination of um, how it transforms as well as that emotive, some testimonials. There was another example there. How about one word testimonials? People's one words they use to describe.
Okay. So one word to describe. Um, and you know, how fun would that be to write to your clients and say, if you used a word to describe our food, what would you, what's that one word? And imagine doing a food and beverage short video, you know, that integrates their, you know, validates it through their one word because you're putting who they are and what group they're with, with great images of food in there as well, right? And then there's just great, I, here's a, a, I love this introductory video. This is an introductory video we actually put together for You'll a venue in Delaware. Watch the stress evaporate from your guests as they arrive at the Verdon Retreat Center in Lewis, Delaware. Managed by University of Delaware's Conference Services, the Verdon Center is surrounded by the tranquility of protected wetlands and boasts a refreshing coastal style with an easy and open layout, indoors So and you can see, you can do something more involved as well. All right? Any questions about video content example? People like to see these. I challenge each of you to put one together. Joel? No open questions right now. Okay. I better check the number. Are people leaving? A, oh, no, it's still a lot of people there. <laughs> no, we're doing great. Okay. Pricing transparency. This question came up. I need to take a quick step here. So I've never been afraid of pricing um, because uh, I'm a firm believer that your greatest competition is yourself. If you're not providing people with something for the price that they feel like they're getting at least their money's worth with, then it doesn't matter what your competitors are doing. It only matters what you're doing wrong and what you need to fix. And I know people feel like, yeah, but my competitors will see this, my competitors will see that. I can tell you that if a group is strictly using a price point to determine whether or not you're where they want to be, then Unless you're a one star priced place like, you know, a motor lodge along the, you probably, I'm not sure you want the business. I mean, you, know, you kind of want to think about, it. I know that's kind of an insensitive thing to say right now in the current climate we're in, because I think we'd all just take any business we could possibly get, but that will, that too shall pass. So pricing, it, it's that piece of information that people most want to know. Think about yourself. If you went to a website and you wanted to buy a pair of jeans, it's great if it tells you how well they're made and how durable they are and there's really great pictures of them and you know how well they wash and all that. But if it doesn't tell you how much they cost, you're not gonna take the next step with them, right? So we are, you're a consumer, think like a consumer. It's the piece of information they want. Now, do I think you ought to put on your home page? Your pricing, no. I think that the pricing should be available for people who get to the point in your website where they're showing interest and they're at that point where they're um, you know, really interested. So you wanna sell your pricing. So, you, so when you put a price point up, you wanna sell that price. So you don't wanna say meeting spaces, you, know, you don't wanna just say the Salem ballroom you know, is, uh, you know, $500 an hour, you want to put some of those features that help people to recognize like, well, that's worth $500, you know, grand Corinthian columns and, you know, built-in technology with, you know, Bose sounds, whatever it might be. So when you put your pricing, I think you want to package your pricing with your, your sales points that bring to someone's attention the fact that oh, maybe I am getting some value out of this. This is worth $500. Or maybe even get them saying, I can't believe it's only $500. I've got to, I'm gonna jump on this, right? The other thing about pricing is it shows your trustworthiness. I mean, if you're willing to put your prices out there that says you're willing, that, that, that you're confident in your pricing, and that, you're, that you, you might not be you know, put in a position of having to negotiate so much and that, that gives people a little bit of confidence in who you are. Um, it also shortens the sales cycle. It cuts out that one part about what's your pricing, right? It's, you know, you've just taken out one stop along the way from the time they've gotten in their car to the time they're pulling in to, for their event with you. you. You've taken out one of the steps. The other thing I would also include though, if you're doing pricing is 
doing a pricing FAQ page, maybe talk to you, your team and say, you know, what are those questions that um, people most often ask about our pricing and what's included and why so much and what's the price, you know, how's that breakdown per square foot, whatever it might be. Um, put some pricing FAQs in there from the experienced people who get those, F, those frequently asked questions. Again, it shortens that sales cycle because you're providing information proactively up front. Hey Chuck, we had a question come in on pricing. Uh, what if you have three different, three or four different price tiers depending on like nonprofit status, friends of the university, et cetera. How do you feel about putting in the tiers or representing that you have different levels based on your relationship with an organization or an institution? What were the three pricing levels again that they? Well, uh, they had named nonprofit <laughs> status, friends of the university, et cetera. It's, it, it's that, you know, sometimes you'll discount a, here's the full price and here's the discount because you're an internal or a special relationship customer. So what I would put is, I, in my opinion, you put in your standard pricing and then um, you can put, if you, uh, if you are um, a nonprofit organization, uh, please let us know. We offer special pricing. I would instead, I would, I would not, don't make your pricing so complex that people are confused. And the other thing is, don't put out there that you're going to pay full price and other people get the discount. Um, for me, uh, from a university perspective, I would have a different price page for, if you have deeply discounted um, pricing for internal clients, I would have um, a separate landing page for pricing just for internal clients um, that you would direct people to uh, because you don't, uh, and then on your web, on your main website, have your standard pricing. That's what I would do. But I would not, don't put up a chart that shows here are three pricing. If you fit in here, here, because what that does is it makes people feel like there's not equity, it feels inequitable, right? And consumers do like feeling like they're treated fairly. So what you're putting out there is anybody from the outside who's coming to our, our venue, this is what you're gonna pay. Okay. All right. Next. Uh, yep, keep going. Chatbots. So I can tell you these things work because we have them at unique venues now. We've had them for a couple of years and when somebody chats with you, you're more likely, to, they're, they're more uh, serious with you because we all know that we don't like to fill out chat boxes and if we're not serious, right? It's because like, I mean, it's, unless you're really lonely, you don't want to just have a conversation with, uh, with someone, um, especially someone who's artificial. So um, chatbots uh, seem to work pretty well. And here's a statistic, 25% um, of all B2C websites now have a chat feature by the end of 2020. They will have a chat feature by the end of 2020. In 2017, only 2% 2 of websites do. This is a trend that is going up. Um, I've actually, and I'd be curious to know, this should have been one of our uh, cool questions, how many of you would love a chat feature on your profile with unique venues? Um, your own profile, Would you, is, that, is that a service you would like integrated into your new, unique venues profile? Whether we can do it or not, I don't know, but would you like to see that? I'd be curious. Um, another thing about chatbots is that it makes you available when you're not. So if somebody calls you and leaves a message for you, or somebody emails you and it's part of you know, 3,000 messages, I don't know about you, but I get I average about 225 messages a day, um, not spam ones, but regular email messages into my inbox every day. So sometimes I don't see the inquiry or the question that somebody asks, but if there's a chat box that uh, through the chat bot and unique venues, then I get a very special alert into my e email box that is a high priority. And so I know that somebody has reached out to me and I'm going to, I'm going to jump on that. Um, it's predicted that by 2021, 85% of customer interactions will be handled by non-human interaction. Now, that number is much lower for us. Okay, we're in, we're in a people services business and people are going to connect with people more often. So I don't think we're anywhere near that 85%. But the truth of the matter is that um, 
you know, a large percentage of people uh, are going to be very accustomed to dealing with chatbots. So having one, I think there was a time when people thought that's really impersonal, but I put this statistic up there because I'm not sure people will necessarily think it's impersonal. Um, and your it studies show that your conversions increase. I can tell you from a unique venue standpoint that if somebody fills out a market your venue page from our website versus um, uh, sends us a message through our chatbot, that the chatbot is a more qualified lead typically than the market your venue. Okay. Um, mobile friendly sites, very important. Fifty. Uh, this is huge. 50% of global search comes from mobile devices. I will share a story with you that I'm not proud of, but there was a month where we saw a huge decline. I wanna say it was in early 20, no, late 2018, maybe early 2019. And thankfully we follow all of the analytics of, of our traffic on a daily basis. And we started to see this trend where traffic was going down and we're like, what on earth is happening? Why are our searches down so much? And what we discovered because we had all of the information and the analytics, was that our mobile traffic, people coming to unique venues, people doing searches on a mobile device was way down. We couldn't fit, we, what happened? And what we discovered was that our web, our web developer had made a significant change to the mobile page that was negatively impacting us. The main feature on it was about our newest magazine edition that came out, not to search for a venue. So when people hit uniquevenues.com on a mobile device, they thought it was a magazine, not a, a venue finding service. As soon as we turned that around after a few days, boom, all of our traffic went back up. So, you know, people, 52% of us are doing search on mobile, right? Um, make sure your mobile site has a very simplified design um, and that you need to have good calls to action. You know, our, it should, your primary call to action should be front and center on your mobile device. When somebody opens up Unique, it is search for a venue, plain and simply, that's what it says. Um, and you can also test your speed. So Google actually has um, a speed test. Uh, if you just Google, Google speed test for mobile um, websites, you'll be able to uh, test the speed of your mobile site because if somebody's searching and using a mobile device, then that means they want efficiency. They want it fast and uh, you know, as quick as possible. Um, the last trend is self-selection. So um, people like, imagine having an event venue website that asks critical questions. This is the future that they say, what type of event are you looking to plan? Boom, okay? So naturally in your website, filtrations are happening because they've said they wanna have a certain type of event that will preclude certain event spaces. How many people? What time of the year? What kind of atmosphere are you looking? Whatever it might be, you can ask questions that help people find the best space that's available on a particular day for what they're looking for. It's kind of like, finding that right fit for the for you know the best pair of jeans for you or whatever so in the next the other thing about it is that process of taking people through kind of like this customizing feature uh, on your website helps people to it creates knowledge and ed educates people about your venue because it may ask questions and provide possible solutions that they never thought of right? They might have come in and started this selection process and customization process by thinking, I want this, but through your process of leading people through the process, they discover other possibilities. Um, the more right questions you ask and help them to hone in on what they're going, that's it. That's what I need. And it helps to lead to conversions. Um, and also provides confidence that what they're contracting for is what they want and need. Okay. Um, another service we offer is website reviews. I'd love to tell you that we do do these free, but um, we go top to bottom of every page of your website. It's one of our consulting services. If there's any way we can help you, let us know. I'm certainly not doing any kind of hard sell here, but we do work with a lot of venues on these. Um, and uh, it's, a really, it's a really great product because we, while we don't make the website changes for you, 
we do make all of the recommendations. I think one that we did recently had 42 pages uh, overview and recommendations that they were able to take to their tech people and say, can you make these changes for more uh, better quality conversions for leads, okay? Um, and that's a, a, big, a big thank you uh, for today. Um, I'm wondering, are there any questions, Joel? There are no remaining questions at this time. So thank you, Chuck, uh, for once again, delivering some outstanding content. We're getting great feedback in the session evaluation and in the chat box with people who are very grateful for the information. So I wanna thank everyone that stuck it out with us the whole way. As a reminder, the recording will be available on uniquevenues.com slash resources within 24 hours. I will ask Chuck to send me his PowerPoint so I can distribute the slides along with the poll questions. Uh, to everyone that attended today. And um, just again, since you hang, hang out to the end, if you'll all bear with me for one second here, I'm going to share my screen one more time and show you that we have um, a sneak peek. We haven't even announced them yet. Um, there we go. Uh, but we have some more webinars that are lined up for you. We have the last couple you already knew about, the wellness workshops coming up, one on physical vitality tomorrow and one on relational connections next week, along with a member group therapy. Uh, then we're gonna pick up with a new series called Taking Your Business to the Next Level. These are member webinars. Uh, the first one will be on business plans, how to create a business plan for your organization on April 28th. We also have a new series called the Unique Series, uh, and uh, you can see three of them listed here, one on universal design for meetings and events on April 30. Uh, one on Generation Z and their, uh, how they relate to marketplace consumerism on May 5th. And uh, finally, one on leadership on May 13th. Uh, and you can see we're gonna hold another industry expert panel on May 6th. So again, plenty more educational content coming from Unique Venues. We know right now this is an opportunity for people to really uh, take the time to engage in professional development. And uh, we're happy to be able to bring these to you. So we look forward to seeing everyone on a future uh, webinar with Unique Venues. Thank you everyone for attending today. And uh, we will we wish you a good rest of the day. Oh, Chuck? Stay healthy and hopeful, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great day.